Hello everyone and thank you once again for joining us on our channel. We started a brand new quarter of studies today and we're looking at, in our brand new quarter, we're actually looking at making friends for God, the joy of sharing in God's mission. So we've not too long finished our previous quarter of studies where we, did, where we talked about how to interpret God's word, but now we're going on to how to witness and why witnessing is important. So thank you for joining us and I hope you enjoy um, the study with us today. You're with myself, Colleen, and also with Pedro. Before we go any further, we're just going to have a word of prayer before we go into God's word. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for your word and we pray that your Holy Spirit may lead us into all truth from it. In Jesus' name, Amen. So as I've mentioned before, this is a brand new quarter of studies. We'll be looking at, um, we'll be looking at different topics including sharing the word of God, sharing the story of Jesus. And today we're actually looking at um, why witness. So we're basically just introducing this topic. Um, about witnessing. So why should we, why should we witness as um, Bible-believing Christians? Before we go on to that, I just wanted to, for us to read a Bible text. And um, for those of us who are following us online, I'm reading from 1 Timothy, 1 Timothy chapter 2, and I'll be reading 3 and 4. So 1 Timothy chapter 2, reading from verses 3 and 4. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Saviour. We will have all men who will have all men to be saved and to come unto the knowledge of the truth. That's our um, opening Bible text then for today. Now, before we actually start speaking about um, why witness, um, I wanted to um, kind of like just step, a, step back a bit and just look at the whole idea of the fact that we're actually discussing witnessing and the importance of witnessing. And I think the reason why I think that we need to actually think about why we're discussing this topic is because sometimes I think most people would see a topic like, um, for example, a topic that talks about um, being prospered or a topic about something like that and people, many people would potentially be interested in that. But then when you talk about something like witnessing, people are sometimes less interested in witnessing because they feel as though, well, you know, I do A or I do B, so I do witness, I don't, I don't necessarily need to study about witnessing. So why is this quarter of studies actually relevant and important to us as Christians? You mean on the topic of witnessing? Yeah, like this whole, there's this whole quarter about making friends for God and the joy of sharing in God's mission. Why is this whole quarter and everything that we're going to discuss for the next 13 weeks really, really important? Because it deals with one aspect of identity. Yes. And identity is a key question in human life. Uh, who am I? Yes. Why am I here? Mm -hmm. Where am I going? This is all related to identity and questions such as these ones have been asked from the dawn of day. Yeah. Uh, what's the meaning of life? Mm -hmm. I believe witnessing is part of the answer right. to the questions of identity that I just mentioned. Mm -hmm. Who am I? Mm -hmm. Am I a witness? Witness to whom? About what? Mm -hmm. Why? It's an identity question. And like every other identity question, mm -hmm. it's important. Right, right. That's, that's, that's quite key actually because um, we talked about identity and I think about the fact that there are many people who are searching for meaning and purpose in their life. Yeah. They're searching for meaning and purpose and as Christian, we should recognize that you know witnessing sharing god's word is an important element of our meaning and purpose in life yeah 
Um, so, so the question then, why witness, is, um, is an important one in respect of, as Bible-believing Christians, we've been taught and told that we should witness. But um, what exactly is witnessing? Okay, I mean, to answer this question, you first need to think about why you would need to have a witness. Mm. What is witnessing? Mm. First of all, within the biblical context, we did not invent that, that, that concept. Mm. We have the word witness from the beginning of the Bible to the end of it. Mm. And you only witness about a situation. You have to be actively involved in that situation so that you can witness about it. I'm trying to answer the question, what is witnessing? Witnessing is to give an account of what you have personally been involved in Generally speaking, we have the word witness, for instance, in um, the Old Testament, um, that it occurs about 17 times just in the Torah, that is uh, the book of Genesis to the book of Deuteronomy. And usually, it only appears in two contexts. Witnessing... Um, in, in a legal sense, mm -hmm. you are part of a situation that needs sorting. Mm -hmm. You are a third part. You have seen something. You witness. And the other con uh, context in which the word exists or appears mm -hmm. in the Torah is the context of covenant. Again, you witness a covenant, something, a legal situation. So you understand that witnessing is not something flippant. Witnessing is not something of no importance. Witnessing is very important mm -hmm. in one's life, biblically speaking. Whenever the term is involved, right you have a serious situation at hand. Okay. So that means that from a perspective as a, of a Christian, then witnessing is therefore really, really important in regards to, in regards to our walk. Absolutely. But that requires you to understand, first of all, the situation to which you need to witness. Mm. Because as we said, the concept of witnessing occurs in two aspects, as I have just said. So, is it, do you have to be a witness as a Christian because you have witnessed a situation, you have seen something, you have been involved mm -hmm. in something that requires you mm -hmm. to say something about it, or have you been involved? in a legal process, a covenant making, to which you have to witness. As Christians, we believe that the answer to, wit to the reason why witnessing is important has to do with how we came into existence. The situation in which we came, creation, basically, and then the controversy between good and evil. That's the situation that requires us to be witnesses. Mm -hmm. For instance, in Genesis 1, 26 to 28, God says, let us make man in our own image according to our likeness, and then gives to man power over the rest of creation mm -hmm. of which he is part. He places him above the rest of creation of which he is part. So, in that very sense, he becomes a witness mm -hmm. of God. That God has created 
this whole creation. And God has given him authority over it. That's, that's the situation in which he witnesses. Then when, as we move on, we are involved from chapter 3 into a controversy that runs between God and his enemy. God says something, the enemy says something else, there is a clash between them, we are in the middle, we are witnesses. So the situation in which we naturally are requires us to be witnesses. And we can be witnesses for God or for the enemy. So one way or another, every human being in this life is a witness of what is going on outside of what we can see. Um, someone says um, in the study for this week, um, the comment is made that witnessing is about Jesus. How would you respond to that statement? As a Christian, mm -hmm. witnesses is about Jesus. He says, yes, witnessing is about Jesus. There is nothing Jesus. wrong with that statement. But again, what's the, what's, what's the history of it? What's the history of it? We do not hear about witnessing when first when we come to know about Jesus. We hear about witnessing implicitly and explicitly right at the beginning, as I have just said. God created man so that he may be um, a witness for him over this creation by giving him authority over the creation. He is a witness of God. Yeah? Then you have texts like um, Isaiah 43 verses, actually I would like to, to read that, Isaiah 43 verses 10, um, verses 7, 10 and 12. Can I read that for yes. you? So in the first one it says in verse 7, Isaiah 43 verse 7 it says, and everyone that is called by my name I have created him for my glory. Mm -hmm. That's Isaiah, yeah? Eighth century before Christ. Mm -hmm. I have formed him, yea, I have made him. If we take a closer look, we realize that in this one little verse, there are the three expressions, the three verbs that we find at creation. I created him, I formed him, created him, that's in Genesis 1, formed him, that's, it, that's in Genesis 2, made him, that's in Genesis 2 as well. And then verse 10, ye are my witnesses, yes. saith the Lord, and my servant whom I have chosen, that ye may know and believe me and understand that I am He. Before me there was no God formed. Mm. The concept of witnessing for God just by being, mm. just by existing, mm. is plainly exposed here. Yes. And then verse 12, I have declared and I have saved and I have showed when there was no strange God among you, therefore ye are my witnesses, saith the Lord, that I am God. So it's good to say witnessing is about Jesus. That's okay because Jesus is God as we understand it. Nothing that was made was made outside of him. Everything was made by him and for him and through him. But we first understand the concept of being witnesses within the context of our creation. Mm -hmm. We witness that there is a God and He is the only God of this universe. He has made us, He has created us, He has formed us. That witnessing becomes important within the concept 
of a controversy mm -hmm. that is this God is facing an opposition. Right. Are you with me? Mm -hmm. And in the middle, there is us mm -hmm. as a witness that He is. That's why verse 12 says, I have declared, I have saved, I have showed that when there was no strange God among you, therefore ye are my witnesses that mm -hmm. I am God. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. And you talked about um, the controversy between Christ and Satan. And in the context of the controversy of Christ and Satan, I wanted us to look briefly at where witnessing comes in in regards to our part, in regards to our witness and the salvation of others, our opportunity to, to what you would say, work with God for the salvation of others. I want to us to look at um to quickly look at um to quickly look at a, te a text from James, James five nineteen and twenty. And this text. So if you're studying along with us, it's um, James five. 19 and 20 and it says brethren if any of you do error from do err from the truth and one convert him let him know that he which converted the sinner from the error of his ways shall save a soul from death and shall hide a multitude of sins yeah so this text is um talking about how through witnessing and through ministering to our brothers and sisters in Christ, that we can be part of that salvation, that salvation process. This is what we're saying. This is one aspect of it. Of course, the, the, the opposite of that, and we need to understand that. We need to understand that everything we do in this life mm -hmm. goes this way or that way, for this one or that one against this one or against that one. That's why Jesus said, whoever is not with me is against me. The, the, the debate is polarized in that right. sense. Why? Because of the situation in which we are. What we're discussing is why we should witness. And the answer we're giving is because we are in a position in which it cannot be otherwise that we witness, whether for this or whether for that. And along what you, you, you just read here, if I may read a text for you mm -hmm. in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse um, 14. Um, 1 Corinthians 9, verse 16. Um, verse 16, it says, it's Paul speaking, and it says, for though I preach the gospel, I have nothing to glory of, for necessity is laid upon me, yet woe unto me if I preach not the gospel. Mm -hmm. Along with what you have just said, because we are all involved in this situation of this controversy that is all around us and of which we are taking part, there is a necessity for us to be actively involved yes. in telling the truth about, who God, is. about God. That's the reason. And, and doing this, that's where you go to the text you have just read, doing this you are allowing somebody else who is involved, mm -hmm. whether knowingly or unknowingly, involved in that controversy to know the truth. That's why, if you remember at the beginning, I said anytime this expression witness occurs, it's always in the context of a legal mm -hmm. uh, situation or a covenant. You allow this person to know the truth about 
their own situation and what it is supposed to be. You with me? Yes. And, and Paul is saying that necessity is imposed on me, not because somebody forced him, but by a sense of duty. You can't watch somebody die mm -hmm. without doing anything to help. Mm -hmm. Recently, we had this situation that uh, moved the whole world yes. because somebody was murdered yes. in front of the whole world and nobody helped. Mm -hmm. Those who could have helped and did not, they were treated as much responsible, as mm -hmm. responsible as the one who yes. acted mm -hmm. by killing. Yes. You with me? So that necessity is there for us. It's not an option. Mm -hmm. And if you say to yourself that you're a Christian, you need to echo that with, with Paul. Mm -hmm. The necessity, if you don't preach the gospel, if you don't witness, if you don't tell the truth mm -hmm. about who God is, mm -hmm. woe unto you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because that's a very good point, because the whole idea of, of um, witnessing, it's also a part of our growth as Christians. It's a part of um, our spiritual growth and having a deeper walk with God. In fact, this is what gives you sense in your life. Mm. It should be. Um, it should be what yeah, gives a sense. But, uh, look, if the ultimate reality is that you are engulfed into a controversy that will claim, mm -hmm. claim your life and everybody else on this planet mm -hmm. forever, yes. what comes before that as a priority in your life? Mm -hmm. Than to understand that and appropriately take measures? What else? Mm -hmm. Your job? Your skin, mm. your hair, your clothes, mm. Mm. your car, yeah. your house, what? Mm. So you understand that when, when, when Paul speaks about the necessity being imposed on him, he is speaking about the heaviness mm. of that situation. Mm. So once you understand that it doesn't matter who you are, your life takes a different direction. Mm -hmm. You answer the question as to why are you here? Who are you? And where you are going? Mm -hmm. um, if you read, for instance, um, Isaiah 49, verse 6, can we, do we have time to read that? Um, no, maybe we don't. Okay. You read Isaiah 49, verse 6, um, Paul reuses that in 2 Corinthians 5 verse 14 mm -hmm. and he says, God has given me as a light to the nation. Now this is what Jesus himself uses for his ministry. He is a light to the nations mm -hmm. because the nations are in darkness. And as much as Jesus was a light, Paul reappropriates himself of that concept because he understands that Jesus wants him also to be a light to the nations. Mm -hmm. And we as Christians, 2,000 years after Paul, can do the same reappropriation and reuse of that text to say we are a light mm -hmm. to the nations. This is our aim, our purpose, and that's witnessing. Mm -hmm. Definitely. And um, just the last point I wanted us to touch on um, before we close is um, we, as Christians, we have a great commission. We've been given a great commission in regards to preaching the gospel and as we just discussed about witnessing. But many of us don't understand that, that obligation. We don't truly truly understand that obligation and part of that is because there is we're not motivated by love we're not motivated by love for christ or love for our fellow brothers and sisters 
That's exactly what Paul says when he says that necessity is imposed on him in that same passage. If you read from from uh, verse 8 to 11, the, the whole passage, he says, for the love of God mm. constrains me. Right. So, so you can really understand that it is not that a burden has been mm. placed on him like it would be in Greek mythology, um, like Sisyphus. Uh, <laughs> interestingly, we don't have time for that. No, no. Um, but because of who God is and what he has done, mm. he cannot sit and watch the whole world die mm. in ignorance. Mm. He has to witness what happened mm. in the past, what is happening now, and what is going to happen according to God's word. If that does not give meaning to your life mm. as a Christian, to the point that you understand the necessity mm. of witnessing, I don't know what will. <laughs> yes. Probably you need to ask yourself the question, not about whether you should witness or not, but to whom are you witnessing? Because mm. you are life, witnessing. Yes, your life is a witness. You are witnessing. Mm -hmm. You are witnessing one way or another. So the very life that we live, um, the fact that we're here on earth, the fact that we are within this controversy between good and evil, between Christ and Satan, makes us all witnesses. Whether you believe in Christ or not, we are all witnesses in oh, some yeah. way. Yeah. Like in the in a courtroom. Yes. Okay. All right then. Well, thank That's you, all. thank you for your time. I want to thank you all for joining us today and I'd like you to join us next week um, as we continue our brand new quarter of studies and make sure you come next week with your Bibles and I pray that you are blessed by the study for today. Thank you.